This episode of Oops the Podcast is presented by The Busker. The best. Triple cask, triple smooth, absolutely delicious Irish whiskey. Dude, the one liquor that we didn't have in our apartment was a whiskey. So being able to throw that busker up there, and I'm not joking you, it is the in the front of the bar. And every time I look at it, I'm like, oh, wow. This is nice. This is emblematic of what I'm doing in my you life. Ha- you bring one of these puppies as a housewarming gift to Julio's new apartment, and I'll tell you what, he's not going to ask you to leave. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> Go find yourself some Busker whiskey. Get it in stores. It's delicious. We love it. Enjoy the Busker. Triple cask, triple smooth, extraordinary smoothness. Find the Busker in store. Where bold meets tradition. You know, we went to like three or four antique spots. And I get to a very, you know, it doesn't take long for me to get to a point where it's all the same. I feel like that is wood. I feel like (laughs) I'm in a train that's moving very fast and I have my head pressed up against the window, but I'm keeping a soft focus and it's all just a blur. (laughs) Yeah. Instead of being like tree, tree, (laughs) brook, stream, (laughs) stonewall, horses. You know, Julio. Yeah. Hey, what? Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back to Oops the Podcast. All right, lots to unpack here. I got something for you. Please, Julio. Julio, I don't know where you came up with that idea. Dude, this guy was a huge turkey. What is this, Japan? Which is yeah. one of the reasons why I hadn't told you about it. No, and I also just assumed you were saving it for the pod if you were going to tell me. Yeah, yeah. Which, of course you were. Oh, but. yeah. Wow, here we are. Oops, the podcast. Boy, am I happy to see you guys. Good to see you, my Here's friend. Julio. Here's Ryan. Here's Chris. The gentleman. The family. The peaceful four. <laughs> the four peacemakers the four peacemakers you guys are like a, a living walking breathing exercise for me it's good bro because i'm high strung i'm a little high strung these days and uh, you guys are a wonderful whew, safe space for me it's good man welcome back how are you amigo i'm doing good man i'm doing good we're in the midst of the move we, we're basically done piece of furniture or two to arrive uh you know it's a downsize, but it's a good apartment. You know what I mean? There are so many things about it that are better than the other apartment. I can't even begin. Like, we've been listing them, and it, the list is, like, insanely long. If from simple things to it is so quiet. It's That's so quiet. Unbelievable. I've been bitching for two years about how loud my apartment is, and I'm realizing now how unusually loud it was. During the day, there were these satanic children running around upstairs. <laughs> bounding around bro. In dutch wooden clogs as if they were as if they were preparing for the triple jump <laughs> boom 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 <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy what are they doing up there and i've heard like yeah dude i don't know so there's that then in the middle of the night road work that would begin around midnight that sometimes was so loud you couldn't escape it the sawing of metal Mm-hmm. As it imagine nails on a chalkboard times a hundred, mm-hmm. and you, there's nowhere you can go. There's nothing you can do. Nothing. Closing your ears doesn't drown it out. Then in the morning, endless construction across the street that just ended, and then construction on our on our own building. Yeah. We've been sleeping like like young children. We've been sleeping like angels, and I've been like working. Oh, since you moved. Yeah, dude. I've been yeah. working ten times more effectively. Mm-hmm. I've gotten so much done in the past week. Wow. Even though it's, and that's just the tip of the iceberg, right? But still, <laughs> we're s- <laughs> better faucet pressure, better like, dude. The people in the building are so nice. Yeah, it is just phenomenal. You know, it's great, man. But still, man. there's the little, like, like Hill Dog. I think is bummed out about the downsize. She bought all this cool furniture for the old apartment. Most of it's now in storage, uh, which I think she's getting used to. I at first was sort of bummed out by the neighborhood, but now it's really begun to grow on me. It's a superior neighborhood to my old neighborhood wow it's just not as walking distance from everything yeah, sure um so yeah dude yeah it's interesting this is a remarkable change of tune mm-hmm. i know <laughs> i'd say I so know. don't you remember last week oh, he was man. not happy he was not I know, I was struggling. you were not things happy. Aren't looking good i was struggling there's just shit everywhere yeah but the second the shit was was sorted uh, dude, I've been m- crushing these edits. Like the Afghanistan thing's getting pretty close. Oh, buddy boy, it we are waiting. 
on tender hooks. It's a beast. Uh, so that's good. So then here's an interesting thing, though. So there's a mezuzah on our on our door. On your door. On our door, a mezuzah. Mm-hmm. Uh, it is a little sort of for anybody who's not familiar. Uh, it's a Jewish thing, and it's sort of like a little, almost like a little rectangular cube. Yeah. It sticks to your door. Uh, it's some sort of blessing or something, right? Now, I've heard differing thoughts on this, that if you were to take it down, somehow it might be bad luck. Um, really? Yeah. And some people have been like, well, you're not Jewish, so it doesn't matter. And I'm like, I know, but Hill Dog is Jewish. And to be honest, she, need, she doesn't need bad luck. One cashew, and she's toast. Oh, Lord. It's as, far, it's as simple as one cashew shard oh, making yeah. it into her, her fried rice, and she's done. <laughs> You know, so we don't need Hill Dog having bad luck. So, dude, I've been calling synagogues to try to get. Are you kidding? I swear to God, to try to get theological uh, guidance <laughs> and try to get somebody o- over there to take it down for us. Oh, you need a you need an ordained I don't uh, know. rabbi. I don't know to take it down. I'm not sure. And Ryan, maybe you could help here, but yeah. I don't want to take the risk of giving Hill Dog bad luck nor myself bad luck. And to be honest, like you know, I'm not necessarily religious in any sort of conventional way but i'm not against the idea of a greater power sure i just have i've chosen not to think about it more well (laughs) here's here's the first question i have is there any uh anything that says it would somehow be sacrilegious for you to keep the mezuzah on the door if you're not a practicing Jewish family. I think we could leave it up, but I don't know that I need to have religious uh, no. religious ornaments. ornaments in my apartment, whether it would be something that represented something that I was aligned with, which, by the way, there's no nothing like that. I wouldn't want a cross on my door. Yeah. I don't want, I don't want any sort of uh, religious ornament unless it's a some bloody sort of, goat's head unless <laughs> uh, aside from me dude, if, if i were to be on some uh imagine walking by whoa <laughs> those people really are very religious <laughs> <laughs> that's a fresh one it's still bleeding they've been here six months <laughs> That's how long has that been there oh dude they replace it every week <laughs> they get a new one every week they must be part of some program <laughs> some subscription service <laughs> subscription service i mean we get fresh tulips every week but they get a new goat head <laughs> dude yeah aside aside from things that i've collected in my travels i'm not really interested in having religious uh religious uh stuff yeah in the apartment so Whatever. I'm not. I, I, so it's still there, and that's fine. I have no. I have no issue with it. But I would like to remove it responsibly for the well-being of everybody in the unit. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So if anybody has any guidance Boy, on that, in- interesting. What a. Uh, what a. You got to be real careful with that. There's a lot of powers at yeah. play. I'm, yeah, and that's the thing. I'm. I'm not a person who's like ah. I'm. I'm. Willing to believe that somehow my luck could turn. Would you? Were I to remove that? <laughs> let me ask you. Would you convert to Judaism? <laughs> to remove the... No, to, to make it deserving of being on your door. If you, I... if, you found out, if you found out that removing it was such bad luck that you really worried for Hill Dog's life, <laughs> would you convert to Judaism? I would just leave it there for her. I think that would be fine. But what if the, what if there was a a contingency that uh, anybody also who lives in a home that is not Jewish but has a mezuzah on the door is uh, an unwelcome trespasser of this holy space? Hey, let's, let's just hope that that's not the case. I mean, heretical no, I don't, poser. <laughs> I don't know, bro. I don't know if that would be enough to get me to just become a religion. Yeah, I, it requires steps and paperwork. I imagine. Yeah. Does yeah, yeah. I think it might. Might. There's a great episode of Sex in the City, actually, where Charlotte converts to Judaism so that she can marry Harry. Oh yes, right. Um, yeah. I've heard of such things for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, so another thing. So we have our beloved handyman Vasil, who we Basil. use to do stuff. Now Vasil, <laughs> uh, happened to have happens to have moved to Chicago. Oh. I know, and he's like, well, he goes, don't worry. He's like, uh, my buddy Beck, my buddy Beck, Beck. Um, is still around. 
So uh, you hit him up. So we hit him up. Hillary and Beck's in the apartment. I'm not there. She goes, Beck's here. He's good. She's like, uh, I think he's some sort of Central Asian, uh, of some Central Asian heritage. You know, like Russian, but also like Asian. She's like, I only know this because of you, by the way. And I was like, oh, cool. So I show up and then I'm like, so Beck, what's up? Like, where are you from? He's like, I'm from uh, Sheep's Head Bay. I'm like, oh, nice. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, yeah, but like originally, you know, like where you, he's like, no, Russia. What? what Uzbekistan. I'm like, ah, Hill Dog. Well yeah, done. Yeah, ah. yeah, yeah. Wow. wow. So anyway, dude, he's going to mount the TV. Wait, did he say Russia and then qualified it with Uzbekistan? And he said, well, for Uzbekistan and then. How old is he? He's got to be in his mid to late 30s. So he doesn't really remember when they were part of the Soviet Union, which to me is interesting because I don't know oh, how Uzbeks identify. I would have thought they identify as Uzbekistanis. Uzbeks. Uzbeks? Uzbeks. I didn't know that they felt that they were Russian. They have a rich heritage, like a rich you know, historical heritage, but I think they're more likely to like – speak Russian and stuff there yeah. than they are in some of the other other parts of Central Asia. Fair enough. That's what I've heard. Okay. Um, but, dude, so we're talking about it, whatever. Um, at some point, uh, I start asking, apparently him, Vasil, and this other guy whose name I can't remember, uh, they work together, blah, blah, blah. So, anyway, I forget, the other, not being able to remember the other guy's name is driving me nuts. It doesn't matter. Um, so, anyway, <laughs> at one point, he's trying to figure out how to mount the TV. There's this extra piece of hardware and he's like, do you remember who put this up? I'm like, yeah. I was like, Vasil, actually. He goes, oh, okay. He just calls Vasil. FaceTimes it. <laughs> which, what a nice thing to be able to yeah. do. He shows it. I get to see him. Vasil, what's up, dude? He goes, hey. And, you know, both these guys, they're very, like, cynical. Like, anytime they're trying to fix something, they're always skeptical at first and then end up being able to do it. I don't know. I, I can put the bolt, but I don't know. Yeah. And then it works every time. There's no need for them to do that. Yeah. I love the image, too, though, of you seeing Vasil walking the streets of New York and being like, what the fuck? You said you were in Chicago. I know. I know. And have, ah, I know. I said, I said, but. The... I know. I'm here just for a little bit. Yeah. And you feel like, wait a second. <laughs> wait a second. What do you not like what about happened, us? What happened, dude? Yeah. What, what went wrong? So anyway, he, Vasil's on the FaceTime. Get to see him. It's great. I'm like, Vasil, when are you coming back? Yeah. In classic Vasil, Vasil form. I'm never coming back to that shithole. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, you dog. Hey, well, be good, man. Yeah. I'll, I'll try to find ways to text you. Sure. Uh, yeah. So it was nice that that worked out. Slowly but surely getting the apartment together. You know, Love we'll that. We'll Love that. Yeah, very good. Uh, great. Well, man, I'm really happy to hear that you have seen a major improvement in this new home. Yeah, it's good. Because, boy, that is not... I was worried about you. Yeah. Yeah, I know. It's stressful, man. It sucks if you move somewhere and in instantly you hate it. You were comforting, actually, during this because you guys had, like, a similar situation. Yeah. Like, your apartment's a little bit smaller now, and, like, you had just gone through the arc. Yeah. So it was nice for you to be able to give me sort of the big picture reassurance. Uh, I appreciated that. Yeah, you that know, helpful. I think... Um, your guidance. I think that's... <laughs> what is more stressful for a couple... Who lives together than moving from one home to another, especially I downsizing. I know. Because as the guy, you become very aware, not to be super sexist, but you become very aware of how much stuff women tend to have. I know. I know. And you become, it's hard not to be judgmental. <laughs> like, really? You, 50 pairs of blue jeans? Come on. She's been pretty, fortunately, she's, she's not terrible about that. Um, that's really funny though. Dude, so this is funny. So we had the movers, which by the way, <laughs> Ryan was here for this. Uh at one point I'm like, You guys want some music? And these guys were all like Hispanic guys. Um <laughs> and I was like, What kind of music you guys want? They're like, Whatever you'd normally listen to. I was afraid to just play my normal playlist <laughs> because I'd look like, you know, Julia Louis Dreyfus in that Jonah Hill movie where she's like Ooh, like African Americans are here. Yeah. We've decided to, and then it's like something extremely racist. Like yeah. somehow me playing Bad Bunny immediately just felt racist. Mm -hmm. So Ryan was like, "Why don't you like make it like the third or fourth song?" And oh, I was like, oh, smart not a bad suggestion. What if you like sang smart. along to all the words too to show? Oh, I know, I know. I so normally I would, but I couldn't because it would just be too extra. <laughs> so I begin, I begin mixing them in, and at one point the guy sang along to the lyrics, and Ryan looks at me. We've, we've, done, we've done something for them, yeah. And then later in the day, at the new apartment, the
the guy at some point actually goes, Big Bad Bunny fan, I see. And I was like, Ryan was like, he wouldn't have done that if you played it first. Uh, <laughs> Perfect. Full circle. I was like, you fucking dog. Got to ease him in. Ease him perfect. in. That was perfect. Dude, yeah. in Hill Dog, she suggested, she's like, she like asked them if they want food. I was like, do you guys want food? They're like, well, since it's not included, like, we usually just prefer to just give a tip. And I'm like, okay. And I start trying to explain to them that those two things aren't related. I'm like, your tip amount isn't going to change. But I also understand the idea of like, why can't it change? If you were going to buy us food, just give us the money. So then we kind of left it at that. And Hillary's like, what happened with lunch? I'm like, ah, we sort of didn't progress. She's like, what do you mean? She's like, just tell them, explain to me, them that I'm Jewish and that I need to feed them. Oh. And I was like, all right, guys, hey, listen. <laughs> I was like, she's Jewish. Like, you see you... that mezuzah on the door? Yeah. <laughs> I, was, I was like, you guys are getting fed no matter what. Like, mm-hmm. are you guys good with whatever? I was like, do you have any sort of dietary restrictions or allergy? The guy just goes... We're Dominican, dude. No. <laughs> <laughs> so that's really funny. Oh, that is funny. Uh, but then later, I told him about the nut allergy, and he disclosed that he had a nephew or something who was allergic to something. And I was like, okay. But it was still a funny, a funny moment of discussion. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Imagine that kid's life. <laughs> at, like Dominican barbecues and cookouts, and he has to be the kid that goes up and is like, uh, Lo siento, but uh, <laughs> yo, yo no. Nueces. I cannot eat <laughs> nuts. Is that what nuts are? Huh? Is it nueces? I mean, nueces. I may have just made up a word. Yeah, but dude, seriously. No, you're good, nueces. Oh, thank you, hmm. thank you. Um, so, dude, the the nueces. last thing that was funny. So, at one point, Hillary's like, can you, make, can you ask them to bring this stuff down to the street? And I'm like, yeah, sure, sure, sure. She leaves. She's waiting for the Verizon guy to show up at the other apartment. I'm seeing over the move. And I realized that they're not intending to take the stuff down. Uh, and I've, I've been chatting with them a bit, as you now know. So I just didn't have the heart at this point to ask them to do more. And, I, and Hillary goes, did they bring the stuff down to the street? And I'm like, you know what? I'm like, you know, I kind of became friendly with them and I just didn't have the heart to do it. And she's like, that's what you get. She's like, that's what you get for being chatty like that, Mr. Chatty Chatterbox. And I'm like, all right, you know what? Da, da, da. So anyway, I then leave the apartment. Dude, I come back a half an hour later. The guy showing her boxing videos on YouTube. She's sitting on the couch <laughs> watching boxing videos. I'm like, oh, Mrs. Chatter Chatterson over here. Oh, very nice. Yeah, well done. Yeah. Well done, yeah. dude. We're both suckers. Dude. How about instead of watching boxing, we little take some boxes. <laughs> do a little unboxing here. How about we do Unboxing. Mm, cut uh, those puppies down, flatten them out, <laughs> bring them to the street. What do you say? Uh, but yeah, dude, that's that. Uh, all good. I will be honest. It is absolutely killing me right now that I cannot remember the name of the third member of the Russian developer group. Mm. Vasil Becklet. And I do not remember the other guy's name, and it's going to kill me. I almost want to call him right now and ask. Cool. That would be crazy, right? Just text Hillary. She's not going to remember. Why don't you text Vasil? It wasn't Vasily. He's uh, Text Vasil be like, hey, it's you, Beck, and who's the other guy? <laughs> yeah. Uh, all right. It'll come to me. It'll come to me. Don't worry, everybody. I know this is going to kill all of you also. Um, Love so, that. So that's where we're at. Good, man. That is the full uh, move update. It's nice. Hillary didn't have room for a nightstand before. Now she has a nightstand. Before, I'd be afraid to go over to hug her because she'd have a glass of water on the floor. Ooh. So I'd have to use a flashlight. And she'd be like, are you serious? I'm like, what do you mean? I'm going to step on a glass. Right? This yeah. isn't our wedding. Yeah. You know, I can't be fucking. <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> That's the only time I intend to step on a glass, lady. Uh, so, yeah, dude. Very, very solid. A lot of good light in there. 35th floor. Like I said. Wow. Staring. Oh, yeah. Down into the abyss, a really nice sunrise. It's gonna make you feel good, man. It's solid. You guys gotta come check it out one of these days. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Mm-hmm. So that's where I'm at, dude. Welcome. Welcome home. Thank you. Dude, you know what came with me to the new apartment? What? The hangobies. Oh another big uh positive about the new apartment. The refrigerator is way bigger. Mm. And we Working. have <laughs> it works. Yeah, we're not gonna have to buy it when it breaks. Uh-huh. Uh, buy a new one. Um the it has the water thing. Ooh. And you know what? The water thing doesn't have a taste. You know, sometimes the water machine in the fridge has a taste. It tastes. You're saying the water tastes good out sometimes of there. Sometimes it, t- it tastes. It tastes neutral. Wow. I know. Which I. I was like, Hillary's like, this is gonna be a game changer. I'm just used to it having a taste, mm-hmm. and therefore I shy away from it. 
Guess what? No taste. No taste. Uh, so it's good, and those ice cubes are popping right out of there as well. I bet, and Perfect I bet that, for a hangover. That yeah, I was gonna say that lack of taste from the water might make you come away from that spout, saying, "Golly, I could really use some taste." Yeah, you're darn right. I could really use some flavor. So hang OB. Maybe some ashwagandha or some mm-hmm. elderberry or mm-hmm. some ooh essential. Some, ooh. some essential <laughs> or some calm or some wake. Oh uh, yeah, the hang OB, it's really where it's at. Delicious, good for you, solid, and tons of utility in any different situation. Calm will put you to sleep. The wake will wake you up, and the essential will keep you feeling good. Yeah. Sometimes I thought I think about pouring three of them together and seeing how all of that tastes. <laughs> that's fun that's like uh you know did you ever do that when you were a kid have all the sodas yeah. you bet i did <laughs> it's just brown yeah here's this <laughs> and then you pretend like it's good Ooh, the, oh it's delicious it's, am- <laughs> it's amazing how well this grape soda wow. goes with this dark cola <laughs> i've i've stumbled upon something it's mr Pib. try it dad dad's yeah. like i'm okay with my diet coke yeah <laughs> I've been around for 50 years. This is what I like. But what are you doing drinking any of that when yeah. you could be drinking Hangobi? That's, That's exactly right. Doing. Dad, drink Hangobi. Yep. <laughs> Hangobi.com, promo code Oops, I'm Hung, 30% off your order. It's the good stuff. We think you're going to like it. It's been growing. Hundreds of stores now all over Thousands, the place. Thousands, maybe. Uh, and we're feeling good about the future of Hangobi. You should be too. Hangobi.com. Oops, I'm Hung. What's going on with you? All things are solid. Um, I do. I have anything for you to update you on. I'm trying to think. Uh, what did I do this weekend? I guess you went I, to P- Pennsylvania. Yeah, I went to Pennsylvania, uh, which was nice. We had a good time. We went antiquing. Ah, how nice. No, no, not uh, good. To like mm. yard sales or to antique store? You know. Uh, I think this part of the world is a major antique hub, mm. but I've learned that everywhere in the world is a major antique <laughs> hub. Just anywhere that people are have bought too much shit becomes an antique hub. Yeah. And um, I'll tell you, man, antique stores, I have a hard time with them. There's a huge range of antique stores a lot of antique stores are just hoarders presentations yeah (laughs) they're hail marys there's no good display of all the shit Mm -hmm. it's like let's hope somebody wanders in here and stubs their toe on an item they like (laughs) right and it it truly i mean you know lots of antique stores are like that they have dumb stuff hopeless stuff that no one would ever buy oh my god (laughs) ridiculous coat hooks and doorknobs and broken toys from children that passed away and (laughs) just like oh here's a snowboard from my nine-year-old who's now 30 (laughs) and the bindings don't really work but if you, you could use it as a as a table Mm. i don't know i mean bro nonsense true nonsense but then (laughs) if you're in a nice town and you go to a more high-end one things are spaced out and they've been set up almost in an ikea like way as if to say if you had this in your room your room could look theoretically like this there's a thoughtful presentation two chairs with a nice lamp and a desk and everything's for sale, you know? And you sit down in the chair and you look around and you think, oh, wow, you know, this light, I like I like this lamp. This is all right. And then you check the price tag and it's like $1,400. Yeah, that's the thing. And you're like, get the fuck out of here. Things aren't so bad that I need to spend $1,400 <laughs> on something that is someone was trying to get rid of. Mm-hmm. And you know what's funny about that? It's like those kind of people... Not those kind of people. At those stores, they get that shit sometimes from like yard sales. Mm, estate and, sales, yard yeah, sales. Yeah. My parents would always say that when they go to a tag sale in our town, that's what they called it. Uh, I know that there's different uh, nomenclature for, for that sort of activity, but they'd see like the local antique people there and be like, I know what they're up to. 
Yeah, uh, they know the, the sharks. They know yeah, exactly. They're hunting. They yeah, Sierra know. calls it. Uh, you know, tre- we're hunting for treasures. We're treasure hunting. She she has faith. Yeah, yeah. And you know, we went to like three or four antique spots, and I get to a very. You know, it doesn't take long for me to get to a point where it's all the same. Yeah, I feel that, like that is wood. I feel like <laughs> I'm in a train that's moving very fast. And I have my head pressed up against the window, but I'm keeping a soft focus, and it's all just a blur. <laughs> yeah. Instead of being like, huh, tree, tree, <laughs> brook, stream, <laughs> stone wall, horses, you know? Julio, yeah. hey, what? Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> Did I see you waving at our train the other day? <laughs> yeah, the 405? <laughs> The direct Amtrak? Yeah. <laughs> sure did. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing we do. Um, no, I mean, you know, I was keeping, I, 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 my eyes glazed over. And I got to a point where, and she doesn't necessarily, <laughs> she doesn't really know when that's happened. And so we're wandering through, and I just start kind of peeling off. In my own direction. Yeah, you've entered Fran land. Yeah. I'm, yeah. And I like, I walk outside. Yeah. And I'm like kind of s- kicking things over. <laughs> I'm sitting on a curb and picking up pebbles and throwing them. We had a nice time throwing pebbles. Yeah. Throwing time. pebbles is therapeutic. It's <laughs> very nice. But she comes out and she's like, what happened? You know, because up, up to that point, I'd be pointing things out and being like, well, that's nice. Mm-hmm. And she'd be like, yeah, it is. And I'd be like, let's get it. She'd be like, no, no. Like, come on, why not, baby? Yeah. And I got, I, I got uh, sitting there, and she comes out. She's like, what happened? And I said, you know, what, what, what are we doing? <laughs> what are we doing? She's like, what do you mean? <laughs> what happened here? And I'm like, well, it just doesn't seem like you're going to buy anything. And if that's the case, then what are we still doing, doing this? And it made me realize that, our objectives are completely different. She's happy browsing. Yeah, yeah. Browsing with no intention of buying. And she said, you know, in order for us to buy something, it would really have to, you'll know when you see it. Right, right. You know when you see it. And I was like, well, I thought we saw about 30 different things (laughs) that we knew when we saw them. She was like, no, no. (laughs) And then you just return to the same conclusion I always arrive at, which is, it's just not up to me. Yeah. Yeah. No, I get you. No, my dad will like go with my mom to do it. And I think he likes it too, but I think he has that same thing where like, he doesn't necessarily care. And even if my mom were to, sometimes she'll like to tell him stuff and he's just like lovingly looking at her, which is nice. But the end result is he has no idea what she's saying. So she's like, (laughs) she's like, should we, should we like do this? And I'll just be like, "Uh." (laughs) Yeah. <laughs> and I'll give her a hug. I'm like, dude. <laughs> yeah, yeah. She'll be like, do you want to do this? And he's just looking off going, yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> like, That's very sweet. Not even in reply. Like, yeah. she'll ask him a question. <laughs> do we have room for this in the room? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's beautiful. Dude, at one point, I wandered across the street into a fudge shop, <laughs> and I bought fudge. Nice. I bought some white chocolate almond bark. Nice. A gigantic dark chocolate peanut butter cup. Yum. And I bought a turtle. Ooh. And they put them in a nice little box for me. And then I went back into the antique store and I sat down on the couch and started eating fudge. And I wanted someone to tell me I couldn't eat it. <laughs> I said, don't you fucking dare. I want you to. I want you to tell me that this Victorian love seat I'm sitting on is you know passed through the provenance yeah. <laughs> is from all the way back in you know Kensington Palace. Hey, please don't you? F- oh, you know how much fudge has been eaten on this thing? Yeah. <laughs> if a little fudge is gonna ruin the value of this thing, well, then I don't want it in the first place. <laughs> Dude, I remember I went to a wedding in Pennsylvania a couple of years ago, and there was fudge stores everywhere. Is that like a Pennsylvania thing? I wonder if these are things are close to. Each I think other. fudge stores and antique shops. Or nearby. Go hand in hand. I love the feeling of like an old candy store that's like been there from a better time. Yep. When Eisenhower was in office. Yeah, I like that. You know? You put a whole big mixed bag of nonsense together and they put it on a scale. (laughs) 
<laughs> That'll be 48 cents, <laughs> Jimmy. Dude, you know what uh, Hill Dog and I have begun doing, which is really fun? We go back and forth with movies. So I'll have to watch her movie, and then she has to watch my movie. Really? Yeah, we watched The Parent Trap. I've never seen it. Oh. Such a movie. She's seen it a hundred times. She was sobbing still. I'm like, bro, you've seen this a hundred times. <laughs> sobbing at the end. Uh, and I enjoyed it. And then I made her watch The Substitute. You seen The Substitute? No. It's like, <laughs> dude, it's a ridiculous, like, campy action movie. Oh, we've talked about this like, yeah. a year ago. The four so. sequels with silly uh, yeah. subtitles. Yes, yes. It's in like, there's so many <laughs> hilarious fucking, uh, like lines in it that my fam, my dad and my brother and I have been quoting our entire life. And like we made, I made Hillary watch it. It's just like an absurd movie where like the substitute teacher is a mercenary and he like beats the <laughs> shit out of the, all the kids in the school. <laughs> in Clinton- <laughs> Dude, it's amazing. But like the kids in the school are all in gangs and shit. Uh, yeah, yeah. And there's just so many like, cool, like I will call my dad out of nowhere and just be like, Yo, there's no way he's a fucking teacher, man. Like, just <laughs> quoting yeah. shit from the movie. Like, oh, I'm about to sue this fucking place. Like, just so many good lines. And just forcing Hillary to watch it was such a hilarious exercise. <laughs> I recommend doing this with your significant other. And it's a really wonderful detente because she will yell at you for looking at your phone if mm-hmm. you're watching her movie. Mm. And therefore, when she is watching your movie, she can't be on her phone because she yelled at you for being on your phone. So normally she'd be on her phone the whole fucking time, but she actually watched wow. the entire substitute. It's a it's an agreement of mutually assured distraction. Oh wow, wow. that's very good. Wow. That like if you were to take good. out your phone, she, you knew she would take out her phone. I know, dude. I know. That's that was good. a well formed. Uh, very good. Quip. We've had a couple good. Because distraction is close mm, to yeah. destruction. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just hoping that she will begin reciting Mark Anthony lines from the movie someday. He's the star? He's the bad guy. He is phenomenal. Like, wow. Amazing actor. There's all this ridiculous. Like the singer, Mark Anthony? Yes. <laughs> he's the main bad guy. He's named Juan Lacus. At one point, there's a dramatic scene where they call his name when he's taking attendance. He goes, Juan Lacus. And, and he hears him say it. He has two girls with him, puts his sunglasses down, sticks two fingers in his mouth in like a sexual way, and then takes the middle finger out. Wow. And everybody else in the class is just also, <laughs> it's ridiculous. Hillary watching the movie, she goes, what school is this? <laughs> she, she goes, These kids would never be in school to begin with if yeah. they were behaving this way. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, it's a good, if you're looking for a movie to laugh at, but that's also awesome, that's a good one. Cool. Can I read the subtitles? Yeah. For the sequel? So there's the, sub- there's the Substitute that came out in 96. Then the Substitute 2, School's Out. <laughs> substitute 3, Winner Takes All. And then the fourth one is failure's not an option. Oh, I like it's pretty that. Pretty badass. Yeah. All with Treat Williams, right? The, the next three? Yeah. They couldn't get Tom Berenger anymore. Hmm. Uh. <laughs> I've started, I've gotten to a point where I'm, oh, I'm starting to think I might be a two cups of coffee kind of guy per wow. day. Dude, I, I could easily be a seven cups of coffee guy. If I, wear coffee I know. It, it just no is problem. a matter of being disciplined and not allowing it but there are days now where i think oh my gosh this has been a long day danny palmer would say dude coffee's proven to be good for you dude it's good for your heart <laughs> danny palmer <laughs> okay danny palmer <laughs> all right danny i have empirical data on my side dude okay danny all right pal but one thing is is for sure uh if you want to have some good coffee brooklyn roasting company brooklyn roasting company That's guys do it. if you haven't heard of it let me tell you something congratulations <laughs> Welcome to a whole new world yep. of aromatic Arabica. Oh dear. Uh we absolutely love our signature roast, the Oops Beans at Brooklyn Roasting Company, which you can purchase right now at brooklynroasting.com. Trust us. It has our mugs on the front. You'll see it. Check out the Oops blend uh at brooklynroasting.com. Use promo code Oops Beans for 5% off. Delicious. Enjoy your day. <laughs> Did I tell you about the (laughs) girls' volleyball team that I saw at the airport? No. I did not get along with them. Like, dude, what is... I love (laughs) Francis, dude. God forbid. Guy can't walk into a fudge shop without getting into a fight with fucking 10 college volleyball players. Didn't get along with them. What happened? You know. What could have possibly happened? I'll tell you what happened. They were a bunch of bitches. They were a bunch of... (laughs) Mean bitches. How did you begin interacting with them? Well, they were all wearing their cool team volleyball gear, and they were with their coach, 
and they were excited. So either they had come from a win or they were on their way to a big match. And I was near them because they were mingling. And I said, oh, do you guys, uh, <clears throat> you guys play volleyball? And they looked at me like I had, you know, said the dumbest thing in the fucking world. <laughs> no shit, Sherlock. Yeah, they were like, this f- okay, boomer, that kind oh, of thing. Oh, shit, dude. And it's not like I, you know, because I have done, I've been that guy. I've been in a, on a team at the airport in our attire. And I probably thought maybe there was a way for me to shoehorn in. Hey, I remember what it was like to be an athlete. Were you intending to do that? I don't know. Where did you guys play? Oh, Hofstra. Yeah, yeah, we played you guys. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> be gentle. <laughs> <laughs> Please don't hurt me. Oh, come on. Yeah. <laughs> no, um... You know, they were just like, uh, they were just not that, they, they, I don't know, man. This has happened to you before with female college teams. Yeah, yeah. I got into an elevator with a group of them. Basketball. Yeah. I don't know what. It didn't go well that time. They were terrible. (laughs) They were terrible. They were terrible to me. And, uh, you know, you get to a point where you're like, I don't want, I hope, do I need to clarify that I am not like hitting on them or that I'm not I don't know that I wasn't weird. Mm-hmm. How do you? But then you're just digging yourself. At the you're like, hole. hey, what are you guys like? Six one. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> who's Le- your legs setter? Days, huh? Who's kidding. the setter and who's yeah. the? You know, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know, and it, it just pissed me off. I mean, dude, I want to. I hope they lose. Dude, speaking of which, okay. Well, so first of all, I want to know more about what what else went wrong. You just said, oh, when's the big game? And then they were like, no, I, I don't even, I think I said, um, you guys, I think I said, you guys are, are you guys play volleyball? I think it was that because uh-huh. their, their, their jackets didn't say volleyball on them, but they had a ball and then their names and stuff. And it was a volleyball or just a ball? It was ball? hard to know. It could, it looked like it wasn't embroidered very well. Right. <laughs> and so it could have been a <laughs> soft ball, but I was doing a little bit of, well, what body types are they? And they were long and rangy. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, volleyball players are, are sort of long and rangy. S- softball players are a little more squat mm. and muscular. They're, yeah, they have more of a sort of compact center. Of yeah, body. they look like Babe Ruth. They're just str- they're, they're, their strength is more, more centered. Yeah, they're girls that dip. Dip? Chewing tobacco? Did you really? I don't know. Fucking robot. They're always in, Yeah, they're always in their dugouts being like, All right, Jenny, you better swing now. That pitcher ain't gonna throw it all you know, they're always chanting and shit. I'm not hey, so sure. Jenny, 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 one, two, three. That's how they do it. If you ever watch a softball game, they yeah, never I, shut up. Let's go, kid. No, it's Let's not go, that. It's not one offs. It's in unison. They've got fifty different songs and chants. I had to once run the scoreboard for a softball game in school because that was a way to make a little money. And, boy, I wish I'd brought some earmuffs. <laughs> I was an umpire. Yeah? I, I made a controversial yeah. call one time, and one of the dads who I knew, the other coach was running out of the dugout to me. He goes, just walk off the field, Julio. Just walk off the field. <laughs> I was like, oh, God. <laughs> Did I ever tell you about the Afghanistan volleyball game? <laughs> Dude, what? this is one of the most insane things. I have very comprehensive footage of this, and it's one of my favorite segments of the upcoming piece. I went to a, uh, the sports complex in <laughs> Afghanistan. No women allowed, uh, unfortunately. But there was a soccer field, and there was people playing soccer. They were pretty good. And then there was a volleyball game, and it was like a real volleyball game. Like, you know in like a real volleyball game when like whoever's going to spike it, you don't know because seven of them jump? Like it was oh, like yeah. it was like that, bro. But these people Oh, they were that good? Yeah. But wow. these people are wearing all Afghanistan clothes. They're not wearing like sports clothes, but they're fucking good. And there's a couple aces. There's one guy, I think we were calling him Blue Velvet or Blue Thunder. So this guy was ripping the ball. Wow. So dude, the, the funny thing about this, half of the guys playing were Taliban guys. And they were wearing camouflage and shit. And along the side of the court is the people watching. Half of them were wearing camouflage and we're like in their taliban uniforms wow can you imagine winning that game against against the taliban is there uh 
Well, uh, here's my question, <laughs> and maybe you can answer this, but maybe you can't. But my question would be, I could see it going both ways, right? I could see them you it being known you better not beat them. I could also see it being a thing where they'd get mad if they realized that you were letting them win. <laughs> uh... So the thing I suspect, because it wasn't like very clearly Taliban versus the non-Taliban, it was mixed. I think it was the guys good. who were good in the neighborhood. And dude, it was a really funny, like jovial, happy seeming environment. Sure. People watching, they were chilling. The ball would come near me. I'd run and grab it, throw it and be like, oh, oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you cool. like that, right? I love that. love that. I love that. Here you go. I'd throw it be a good toss. <laughs> yeah. Dude, guys, then like two Taliban guys walk by me holding hands, I, which I have footage of. Just two dudes wearing camouflage vests, holding each other's hands. Walking on the, it was so fucking bizarre, dude. Uh huh. What a wacky, <laughs> right? What the fuck? Yeah, yeah. What is this Taliban volleyball game? Yeah. Uh, but anyway, it reminded me of like I always think about this when I watch a horror movie. When you see the scary guy be scary, you don't see the rest of his fucking day. The rest of his day is probably not that scary. He's playing volleyball. He's probably hanging out. He's probably yeah. making overnight oats. A pe <laughs> peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Yeah, he's uh, shoving you know, it in between his mask hole. <laughs> he's joking around. <laughs> he's saying thank you when he buys a candy bar. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, so that that's what this looked like. You know what movie did do a great job of showing that? Which one? No Country for Old Men. It did. Shigore. That is a good movie. What a movie. What a book. Cormac McCarthy, one of my favorites. No um, music in the whole movie. Is there none? I believe there's no music in the whole movie. Dude, the scene where he, you know, I, I think it's second scene in the movie. The first scene is him escaping a police precinct by choking one of the cops to death using his handcuff chain. <laughs> and it goes on a long time. <laughs> uh, but the next scene, I think he's in a convenience store. And I he's scene. interacting with the shopkeeper. And... The shopkeeper just asks one too many questions. <laughs> and immediately he's like, uh, do you have a quarter? And they, he spins mm. it, he flips a coin. And he's like, call it. And the guy's like, well, I don't know what we're putting up. And he's like, you've been putting it up your whole life and you didn't know it. And the implication is if you get it wrong, I'm going to kill you. Yeah. And he gets it right and lets him go and tells him to keep the quarter. And it sets the tone for just the utter psychopath that Shigure is one of the great villains, villains i think uh, in all of film what a role for javier bardem potentially the uh, the actor of our generation potentially yeah he, he you could argue it well, he's in the conversation he's in a lot of heaters including he's the best bond bad guy that i can recall probably in, so in quite some time yep the the rat scene yeah. monologue unbelievable yep. yep um you have any post oscar thoughts oh interesting uh, I was surprised about everything everywhere winning. I mean, I guess whatever. Like, it, it wasn't undeserving. It wouldn't have been my choice, but it was, it was very good. I know Chris loved it. Chris was like the first person on earth to see it. <laughs> I remember. That's not when, true. When you saw it, like, I had never even heard of it. You're like, you got to see this movie. Yeah. And I think that's why I was so excited about it because I didn't hear anything about it. My friend just told me to come to the movie, and oh, I was like, what is cool. this movie about taxes? I was mad. And then. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, it's cool to see Short Round win. The, yeah, yeah. The guy, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. I don't know his name. Key something Kwan. Right? Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Beyond that, nothing uh, too specific. Mm. Solid, solid affair. Cool. It seemed. Um, yeah. Dude, we got some solid emails. Oh, let's dive in. I'm to do it. I think this is good. So first of all, um, this is so. This is a fun one. This is about uh, a flight, a flight question, technicality question. Excellent. Uh, which. We are the right guys to come to for that. Mm -hmm. Flight counter question. Hi, Francis and Julio and Chris and Ryan. Excuse me. My husband and I are in Australia on a delayed honeymoon, and we had a small mishap on our flight from Cairns. I don't know how to pronounce that. Cairns. Cairns. Yeah? Yeah. Cairns to Brisbane that had us thinking about your flight counting competition. We hit bad weather as we tried to descend for Brisbane with lightning all around the plane and tons of rain. I've made this exact flight, by the way. Really? Yeah. We circled Brisbane for an hour, unable to land, and were diverted to the Gold Coast, an hour drive south to land, refuel, and hopefully take off again to try, uh, to try again once the weather cleared. Upon landing in Gold Coast, the crew allowed passengers to exit the aircraft to go on their way if they so chose to. 
Some passengers live in the Gold Coast, but were flying to Brisbane, so the detour worked out for them. This meant the cabin doors were open, and passengers were let out on the tarmac, <laughs> and the doors to the plane were then resealed. Before the second takeoff, they replayed the safety briefing and all their normal procedures for takeoff. The question is, does this count as one flight oh. or two? Two separate takeoffs and landings. Yeah. Uh, we think we agree on the answer, but curious your opinion. I think, well, I always, I always try to think what would, I'd give you authority on the call. Mm -hmm. And I think you would call this two flights. I call it two flights. Yeah. Yeah. It's takeoffs and landings. Takes off and landings. You're take good. off and landing. Doesn't matter if you don't switch planes. Mm -hmm. uh, take off and landing. Because that, that's what we had in Africa, too. And you yeah. can be two for that. Sometimes, yeah. I've had, I had that in Africa, too, where I landed somewhere. Uh, or, like, I boarded a plane that people were already on. You know what I mean? They, like, stopped yeah. to pick up more people. Mm -hmm. uh, so we think that one counts for sure. Uh, thank you for sharing. This is the kind of stuff we like here. Mm -hmm. um, all right. Another good one is Hero Fantasy Gone Wrong. <laughs> Uh -oh. <laughs> oh boy uh, right up our alley hey fellas big fan of the pod last night i was laying on uh the extremely uncomfortable pullout couch you were lying on the uncomfortable pull -out <laughs> couch. okay uh yes um in the labor and delivery room with my wife and our brand new baby hmm. uh, after running after running down to the car to grab a few pillows and coming back up security didn't really ask any questions and let me right in as I was trying to fall asleep, I started thinking about what would happen if someone with a gun just walked into the hospital and started shooting or trying to take babies or whatever and how I would respond. I came up with a game plan in my head of peeking out the small window in the room, waiting for my moment when the gunman wasn't looking and tackling him to the ground and getting the gun away from him. Total hero moment. But what next after I tackle him? I would definitely want to go for his gun. Uh, this piece of shit broke into a hospital and was trying to steal babies or kill people. Surely I wouldn't feel bad or get arrested for shooting him. You got to kill. You got to kill him. But yeah. what See if at, what if at the moment I pick up his gun to aim and shoot security or police show up, see that I'm the one with the gun and shoot me thinking I was the attacker. Mm -hmm. Or if I go after the attacker and I get killed in the process, would I be even more of a hero for laying down my life or just a big idiot for getting involved? And now my daughter doesn't have a father. <laughs> 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 oh, now that please. I'm a dad. Oh. Should I forgo my hero fantasy thinking ways? Interesting. Uh, interested to hear your thoughts. Wow. What do you think? That was a good email. And this sounds like my brain. <laughs> I mean, he really, he really followed the thought <laughs> through. Um, I think that, uh, it, it, you know, you can't know if when you pick up the attacker's gun, security is going to round the corner and see you and kill you so that's kind of a you know it let's put it this way if his question is now that i'm a father should i stop trying to be a hero because i don't want my daughter to grow up without a father that answer just depends on how much of a true hero you actually are that's pretty good. <laughs> because I don't think that any amount of children I have will stop me from diving in the river. <laughs> well, this is my thought, too. If you have the gun, right, there's a couple things you can do. You can do what Tom Berenger does in The Substitute. He takes the, the magazine out of the pistol, dumps it, like, down the, dra the trash chute, and then puts the gun itself elsewhere. You could just put the gun away and prepare to fight the guy. That guy's not going to fight. He's running. Yeah. The guy whose gun you now have is out of there. So I think you'd be fine in that situation. If you do you know how to do that? Fuck no, dude. Do you know how to get the bullets out of a gun? No, but every time I see people do it, I'm like, I should learn to do that. I think the, <laughs> the major thing you got to remember is that even if you take the magazine out and you were to pop the bullets out one by one, there's still potentially a, a round in the chamber. Oh, interesting. And the gun is not cleared yet. Interesting. And so you have to... Get that one Do you do that out. thing where you push it back? I think so. There depends on the gun. I don't. I don't know. I'm trying to like pull it out. I'm just start shooting the gun. I'm like, oh, this is how to take it out. <laughs> 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 That's ridiculous. Um, dude, very good, bro. Very good. Dude, you have you seen MacGruber? No. <laughs> it's good. Is it great? You gotta watch MacGruber, man. You gotta watch that movie. I gotta tell you. <laughs> We may, maybe we need to watch it together because it's <laughs> that movie 
is so funny to some people. <laughs> I think you and I would really enjoy that movie together. <laughs> it is outrageous. Dude, amazing. He doesn't like guns. He doesn't sh- he doesn't work with guns. His move is throat rips. <laughs> <laughs> so the way he, he pulls their th- <laughs> throat out. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Um, all right. Well, I guess that seems the podcast. Yeah, fun. Fun time. Go check out MacGruber. Yeah, that's <laughs> the it. Movie that came out. Many years ago, but yeah, I need to see it. Have we got any facts with Ryan? Facts with Ryan. They were flying. Facts with Ryan. Yeah, so there's a lot on the mezuzah. Okay. You're going to have to do some more research, but here's what I've gathered. If you aren't Jewish, it's okay to remove it. If you are Jewish and remove it, it will cause a lack of divine protection on you and your home. We don't need that. Damn. So I'll send you the article. Okay. If any of you are professionals or have more knowledge, send it our way. Um, because there's a lot involved there. You okay. have something you have to do. Thank you. Um, Adamstown, Pennsylvania, is the antique capital of America. Oh. Is that where you were? That's, I don't think that's where I was. That that's probably close. I can look it up. And then, No Country for Old Men. The Coen Brothers intended for there to be not a lot of music, but mm. there was 16 minutes wow. of okay. music. So that's not really that close, if I'm honest. PA baby. Um, speaking of which, I'm at Helium in Philly. Oh, on April 18th, those nice tickets transition. are moving. Hell they yeah. are moving and grooving. So uh, grab those while you can. Um, I'm also in uh, East Providence, Rhode Island, 14th and 15th of April. That's going to be great. Um, and Yonkers Comedy Club, 27th and 29th of April. I also think, and I'm not positive on this yet, but I believe I'm doing a show in Middletown, Connecticut. Wow. Right next door to my hometown, uh, also in April. Uh, final details of that coming soon. And I think it's a free show. So it's going to be Whoa, sick. Oh, cool. Yeah, really, really cool. Uh, so look forward to catch you on the road for uh, the Better Late Than Never tour. That's awesome, guys. Um, this weekend, I'm in Austin, Texas. You guys should come out. Vulcan Gas Company. About to make a, make a weekend of it down there. Love Austin. Then it's on to Dallas Plano uh, two weekends after that. And then it's on to San Francisco with little Sasquatch. Then Buffalo, Helium, and then uh, West Virginia at the Charlestown races. Guys, tickets for all of that is available at FrancisEllis.com, the hero we need tour. Thanks for listening to Oops! the Podcast, people. We love you, and uh, we'll see you on Thursday. Please subscribe as well to our YouTube channel uh, and enjoy our full episodes in beautiful video color right there. Oops! the Podcast on YouTube.